In this video, I'll show you how you can do scrolled content with force navigation. So what inspired this video? I saw a post on the forums that was talking about scrolling through some content using a multi-state object and they didn't want the learner to be able to press the next button until the learner had gotten all the way to the bottom of the different states, all the way through the scrolled content. And I got to thinking about this and I realized that probably one of the best ways you could do this is very similar to how you might do a content carousel, but instead of like left and right buttons, you might have top and bottom buttons. So let me show you my solution for this. I've already built some of the elements on the screen here. So I'll just take you through what I've got here on the screen. So first of all, it's a little hard to see because it's almost a white button here, but I have two buttons uh, that essentially are going to be uh, kind of like scroll bars. It's not really a scroll bar because a scroll bar would allow learners to click on this and drag it to a new position but essentially it's page up page down these are simple buttons here and i'm going to create some advanced actions that go with those in the middle is my multi-state object now let's go into state view so you can see what's here i've taken the text from the entry on Justin Trudeau from Wikipedia and split it up into five different chunks to simulate what scrolling down through this text would be. I've added this scroll bar here. Now that's just there for appearances. If anyone can figure out how to make it actually function, my hat's off to you. But what I did is in the different multi-states, I simulated what position you would be if this were actually a scrolling text situation. So you can see I have all five pages, each with different text within it there. I have a next button, which by default will be not visible in output. And I'm going to achieve this a, a different way. I'm going to do it with an on enter advanced action. So I could click on the eyeball to make it go away, but I don't need to do that in this case. And of course, I've got a picture of the person in question here, Justin Pierre James Trudeau. So let's start. The first thing we're going to need is the ability to keep track of what position we are on the slide here. So let's go into our project drop down menu and select variables. So I'm going to need to add a new variable and we're going to call this underscore scroll underscore position. I'm going to save that and I'm free now to close the variables window. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an on enter advanced action because of course I need to set up the objects on screen to start off in sort of that first position here. So we'll go to our actions tab and we'll go and select execute advanced actions. I don't have any advanced actions written so far, but you can go ahead and click on the advanced action icon here to start writing this first advanced action. So I'm going to call this page underscore scroll underscore on underscore enter. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that our variable is starting off on the top of the scrollable content. So we're going to assign our scroll position with the literal value of one. We're going to kind of go back and forth between one, two, three, four, and five, depending on where we are in this. We're going to change the state of our content in the middle here to normal. Normal will be essentially page one. Now we want to disable the page up button, this button that you see over here, because of course there's no place further higher in this multi-state object to go. So we're going to disable it so that if learners click on it, nothing will happen. So page up, and we're gonna make sure that our page down is enabled, it should be, but I like to be sure. So that's our page down button. We're also going to change the state 
and essentially the appearance of our page up button to disabled. I've created an alternate state where it essentially just looks a little grayed out. And I'm also going to change the state of our page down to normal so it looks fine. And the last thing we're going to need in this advanced action is to hide the next button. This might be optional depending on whether you want learners to go through the scrolling process each time they arrive on the page. But I think for our purposes here today, I'm just going to show you what that option is. We'll hide the next button. So we're going to save this as an action, click OK, and click Close. So essentially every time you arrive on the slide, it's going to reset all of these objects and the variable to their essentially default state, if you will. So next I'm going to write the page down advanced action, which we will eventually assign to our page down button. But let's go ahead and do it from our properties inspector and select advanced actions. So we're going to call this one page underscore down. And this is going to contain multiple tab decisions, if you will. So we'll start off with the first one and it's going to be called click. So every time you click the page down, what we're going to do is we're going to increment the scroll position by the literal value of one. So if you're on page one and you press the page down, it's going to be on scroll position two and so on. Now what we need is a new tab for if the scroll position is at a value of one. So this is going to be, we'll just call this page one. This will be a conditional advanced action. And we're simply going to ask if our tracking variable, our scroll position variable is equal to the literal value of one. If it is, we're going to disable the page up button, similar to how we did on the on enter script. And we're going to change the state of our page up to its disabled view. We're also going to enable our page down button and change its appearance to normal. And we're going to change the state of our content object, which is all the text, to normal, which is page one. So that takes care of page one. Now you might be thinking to yourself, geez, I need to do five pages. That's going to be a lot of advanced actions I need to write. You can actually leverage the fact that you can duplicate any decision and we can just make some small changes to it. So we're going to duplicate page one. And we'll just relabel this so it's page two. And we'll change the if condition to look for a value of two. We are going to enable, if we're on the second page, we do want to enable the page up situation here. So we'll enable page up and we'll change the status of page up to normal. Uh, the page down will remain the same, but we're going to change our content to page two. We can again continue this process of duplicating these decisions. So now I'll take care of page three. So we'll check to see if the value is page three. And all that we need to change at this point is to make sure that our content is changing to page three. Once more, we'll do page four by duplicating page three. Again, we'll check to make sure that this is a value of four. And all we need to do is point to changing the content to page four. The last one we need to do, we'll duplicate page four, but we're going to need to make a few more changes to page five since it's the end of the scrolling process. So essentially what we need to do is disable page down because there's no further place to go. And we'll change the page down appearance to disabled. Oh, don't forget to make sure we're checking for the value of five. And of course, we'll go to 
page five. But the other thing that we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to add the ability to see our next button because we've gotten to the end of the scrolling. So we're going to show our next button. So that takes care of page down. Save as an action, click OK, and so that's taken care of. Again, we need to now re recreate this for the page up situation. And that's actually really easy to do. We're going to duplicate the whole thing because almost everything is identical. And once we duplicate it, we have a copy of page down. We'll just call this page underscore up. And instead of incrementing our scroll position by one, we're actually going to decrement our scroll position by a value of one. And I'm just going to delete this first line here. And that's literally it. Everything else remains the same. So I'm going to update this action, click OK, and click Close. Now let's just make sure our buttons are pointing to the right advanced actions here. So here's Page Up. We'll go to the Actions tab and we'll execute Advanced Actions and make sure that we choose Page Up. Incidentally, you can also set this to work with keyboard shortcuts too. So I'm going to set this up. I've already done that and assign the page up key on my keyboard to this button as well. So users can literally use their keyboard page up and page down to scroll through this material. Let's update the page down button as well. It also has a keyboard shortcut and we'll just set it up to execute advanced actions. And of course, it's already selected page down in this case here. So let's test it out. I'm going to do a preview in HTML5 in browser. So here we go. We've got uh, the first page here and we can press the buttons and you can see it looks like we're scrolling down the page. And I'll just show you, I'll use my keyboard right now. We'll move my mouse out of view here and you can see that page up and page down works as well. And of course, once I arrived at the bottom of the scroll page, my next button appeared and I can continue with the rest of my project. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.